Cancer, the moon is in Aquarius and she's wondering what you got cooking up for the future and how that's going to impact the soul tribe. Stay tuned to find out how this energy is going to impact you. But before we get into that, for those of you who are returning, welcome back soul tribe. I appreciate your subscriptions, your likes and shares. Your support really is just incredible, Cancer. And it keeps us growing. And for those of you who are new, welcome to the Chariot and Friends. Justin here, and I'm happy Harry Self has brought you here. We're in for an amazing journey. Now, for those of you who are new, this is the purpose of this channel. For those of you who have cancer in your placement, Sun, Moon, Rise, and Venus, Saturn, wherever cancer, this one's for you. And I do tarot card spreads based upon our ruler here, the good old moon. And I'll talk about what sign she's in, what phase she's in, when she's going for the courses, all of those lunar shenanigans. I was actually looking at her the other day. She's so inspiring, Cancer. And just so you're all aware, this is a general reading. I actually was reading something. They were talking about, you know, the moon as the mother of the mother of astrology or something like that. A mother of the universe. I was like, maybe not of the universe. But, and I was like, I like that. But, Cancer, this is a, this is a general reading, not a one-to-one. -one. So, take resonates with you leave the rest with me never force reading on a situation and everything will be dope cancer let's get into it for, for fear of i i tried try doing my first take cancer i was just serving up word salad so let's just get it moving cancer your space has been cleansed crystals oh feeling lovely a little crooked but it's fine it's just great angel around here cancer and cancer you know what? Maybe I, I understand why all this energy is here. Happy Mars Day, and this is a, this is a this is a very very strong Mars Day indeed. Because today Mars is going to be entering into his home sign of Aries. He's he's domicile in Aries, and so now Mars is in the Mars energy in the in, and if you happen to work with a little little sidebar with these planetary days, and if you happen to look into like the planetary hours, if you work with herbs, you know, making different tinctures or salves, different things along those lines. If you really wanted to work intentionally with the herbs, I would look at Venus hours. I want to say with Venus just getting into getting into Taurus are particularly strong. So working with herbs associated with Venus and with the Mars now entering into his sign, working with Mars, there's a great app. It's co it costs a few dollars, but if you're into that type of stuff and wanting to work, if you have those planetary influences inside of your day to day like that, that could be something to work with as well. It calculates all of the different charts. It's really really fascinating. So, but this is a very very strong kind of energy that we're in cancer and it's actually really <laughs> it's really fascinating to cancer because the moon is going void of course today and this has got to be one of the shortest void of courses <laughs> that she has and i'm not sure if she's feeling <laughs> that's really funny <laughs> thank you so we'll get into that in a moment i'm not sure if the moon is feeling that because the moon is going to be going void of course at 8 18 a.m and that will be pacific time and then she'll be moving from capricorn into aquarius at 8 19 a.m so we're looking at about one minute void of course time there cancer and the flavor of this void of course is that she's forming a sextile with mars before she's entering into aquarius and then she'll be forming it's like she's not it's very interesting i feel how this is happening with the kind of the even though this is a very short void of course when when you think about the sextile energy that can be i feel very exciting energy that could be where you know you're thinking about maybe wanting to change up your workout routine for example or start a workout plan so you go ahead and order some like equipment maybe you're getting like leg bands or maybe you're getting a yoga mat or maybe you're getting new running shoes or maybe you're joining a gym you know this would be something that sextile energy it, it inspires it can it can inspire emotion it can just be a nice feeling something that could just come by just kind of come and go you know sextiles are kind of passive energies but i feel with the sextile to mars with Mars getting ready to enter into a sign, you know, it's like there's this this last little whisper of, I almost feel like, how, do I, how am I picturing this? It's, I almost picture, because it would have been, where this would have happened, Mars would have been at the last degrees of Pisces, and the moon would have been at that last degree, like that 29th degree of Capricorn. 
And when you're at those anaerobic degrees, those are critical points. You know, we're getting ready to transition from one energy into the another or into another. And so I feel like all of this buildup that Mars has been kind of having for his grand entrance into Aries, I feel like this could, being this void of course is happening so short, this could be a very kind of sudden burst of energy. Reflect on where you're going next and really kind of riding that wave, utilizing that into sparking some sort of action. Maybe you've been wanting to learn a language, download a Duolingo app or whatever, Babbel or whatever. I've seen there are a few others. Or maybe you've been wanting to work with work with astrology more. Maybe you're going to check out a subscribe to a YouTuber, for example. Or maybe you're going to Maybe you wanted to plan for a trip, and maybe it's not necessarily booking that trip, but at least pulling it up in your tabs, having having it in your active, it's something to keep that excitement going. And I feel that in the in the void of course energy too, it's usually a time to reflect. And granted, this is a very short, this again, a very short reflection, but I feel like it's too sometimes when I feel like you when you feel off track. All it can take sometimes is a minute of just kind of breathing, of gathering yourself as well. When you're going through, I feel like a tough time. That can be one way I feel this void of course energy. Because sometimes, you know, even just thinking about this, you know, this is the time where the moon kind of invites us to go within, allows ourselves to just kind of breathe, see where our emotional state has been. You know, kind of it's, it's the, the emotional landscape is evolving. But I feel like this short one is kind of signifying to you how life can be busy. You know, life can get away from us. We may not have always have the time to sit down and do maybe a 10 minute long meditation or whatever, but we can just take a moment to breathe. You know, worst case, to just kind of gather ourselves and take as many moments as you can a day, I feel like, that to do that as well. You know, to kind of get into that sort of practice of just regularly in the mindset of of regulating, I guess. So that's a very interesting kind of, I feel like kind of analysis as going with the void, of course. And, and I feel like that's a way to keep the energies excited when we're thinking about Mars, you know, how to keep our passions alive, how to keep our mind on straight and how the power of movement and things can keep the energies going. So something to kind of to, to think about there with this, with the void, of course, energy there, Cancer. And then also we are in a waning gibbous phase in Aquarius now. And this is a very interesting energy. You know, when we're thinking about Aquarius, Aquarius is how It's that sense of individuality is how we bring our uniqueness to society, how we participate in the collective, you know, being open to, I feel the the beautiful, like a really lovely translation of Aquarius is that it's a very humanitarian sign, very friendly, very opening to different views, not to, does it doesn't necessarily, you know, when they talk about the detachment side of Aquarius, I feel like it's more so Aquarius doesn't put their, doesn't necessarily need to subscribe to everything that is involved with, but it can keep an open mind. We may not agree on some things, but I can see at least see where you're coming from and I can respect that, but it doesn't, I don't have to take it home with me. You know, I don't have to let that be a big deal, you know, or if I'm and you know what, if something is challenging me, that maybe that what you've said, being open enough to, to realize that this is not you necessarily maybe sparking some, it's one thing if someone I feel like is antagonizing something, but I feel if, you know, a person has a certain viewpoint on, on a thing, you know, that doesn't necessarily have to change the, I, a perfect example is I had, and I, you know, we're all guilty of it. You know, I had a, a notion of one person and it's just like just that initial, you know, when you're thinking about how they how the energies present themselves or how the person may come across as first, I have one totally different view of them. And then I got to getting to know this person a bit more and and completely saw a whole other side of them. And even we had I remember talking about a topic. We were talking about 
uh, you know, we don't need to talk about it here, but we were talking about a subject that could be a little touchy, but the way that he was talking about it, because I don't necessarily agree with it, but I thought it was very intelligent how he was going about it, and I thought it was very mindful. It didn't necessarily change my, my viewpoint of it, but it brought in my perspective of it. And I feel that's the beauty with Aquarius, and I feel this moon is... In being in this waning gibbous, it's like, how can we make, you know, because with the waning phases, we're making space for things. And it's, I feel like it's looking at maybe where we've maybe kind of shut out other people's viewpoints, where we feel that we have to, that has to be our way, that we've only, that this is the structure that we've built on and that's it. And I feel like that's a very kind of dark side of Saturn. And even with Uranus, that can be a little kind of dictatorial, these two energies. But I feel the purpose of this, that, that relationship between Uranus is, and Saturn is, you know, Uranus is one of the outer planets. And Uranus, I feel when we get into those outer planets, that's dealing, you know, those are generational. And Saturn is a generational planet as well. But, you know, we we're talking real large swaths of of people when we're getting into like that that transition even between Saturn and Uranus Uranus doubles the amount of time that he stays in a sign compared to Saturn but I feel like it's that taking that collective energy which is very unique and then grounding that in different sort of ways you know like and there's this And then it's just like, and this is going to be the topic, especially when we're in that Aquarius focus types of things with Pluto being in Aquarius. I was thinking a lot about this. I had a lot of thoughts when I was coming up with this. I'm going to talk about this more when we talk about like the Pluto retrograde and as we do more kind of Pluto things, because Pluto plays a big part in my chart. Pluto's trying, forming a trine with my son. And so, and I've kind of, I've kind of been in it here, here lately, <laughs> but with these Aquarian themes, I feel that there is this needing to kind of assess how we come into the collective, how we've, I, I even feel in the ways that when we think about detach, how we may have detached even, you know how we just like as individuals, how sometimes we can detach from the more unsavory sides of ourselves, how we've done that as a collective as well. And this is not to point a blame or finger or anything at, at people. It's just, I feel like it's something that's just kind of had become like a norm. And it's just like, how can we switch that up? You know, we you talk about the whatever change that you want to see in the world. How are you taking steps to do that? I've been, for example, I used to volunteer a lot growing up as a kid. We'd always do something around the holidays and things. And I've been that's something I've been thinking about personally for a while. And I'm working and getting it all figured out in my schedule and looking into different things that are just around. And it does. I'm not saying that you necessarily have to do it in that capacity, but it's this is just one example and then when I go to talk about my everyday because Aquarius deals with the groups as well so this is a very social time too I feel like to kind of talk about the future where are things going maybe some of the newer things that you're doing that you're trying out and that may not necessarily spark someone like how I may be wanting to do volunteering and community work that may spark up in something totally in you maybe you're wanting to create something for a class maybe you're wanting to whatever this looks like for you but I do feel like the Aquarius energy it keeps, it, it's very fascinating. You know, Aquarius is a, is a, is a conundrum <laughs> sometimes. But it's, it's this looking at ourselves and understanding that we, we are the change that happens in the world. There's a lot of power in community. And when we all show up and, and show up to, and it doesn't have to be perfect, but show up in, with the intention for change, with the intention for advancing the future, then I feel that, that's how we heal individually and collectively. It's very, it could be very, because Aquarius energy, the frequency is a really cool, very, very future-oriented, advanced. I mean, because, you know, when we, it's amazing what you can do too when we all band together, when the energies are coming together as one, when you have a totally different viewpoint and take you outside of your shell. You know, I feel when it's Aquarius is working, man, it works well. So, but 
Yeah, just kind of some things to think about, maybe some things that, you know, appreciating the differences for others, you know, that how we're maybe transforming as a group, you know, or maybe how you're wanting to see transformation in a group, assessing the values and, and things of, you know, this is a time to, yeah, I feel like, how can we give back, you know, because now we've, we've filled up with the moon. So now we're making space for something new as we're working towards this, this new moon. But... Yeah, I think that's what I got for you, Cancer. And if you're curious how this energy is translating in your chart and you want to work a bit more personally, book a reading with me. I have links down in the description box below. And you can understand how, what, what if, for example, when the moon's moving, because she's, you know, she's very active moving throughout your chart every couple, the signs every couple of days. You can see emotionally what things may be bringing up for you. When the moon's in Aquarius, for me, she's, she'll be wrapping up like her time in the sixth house and then the Aquarius starts my seventh house cups, cusp. So then we're getting into my relationship relationships with with people of course with my with like my close personal things and then it's it's it is a it is a usual a time where i'm like a bit more usually thinking about social kind of coming out of my introspective shell after that whole because it's it's been um it's been a fascinating one with this even getting into capricorn when i was in capricorn energy but it sparked something i kind of that capricorn helped me get grounded and get back on track and so this can be where the same can kind of work for you, how when you learn where these points and even like beyond the moon, where the planets are transiting through your sign, where the sun is highlighting an aspect in your life, the sun's transiting through my 10th house right now. And there has been a lot of talks about that as far as like, where am I going? What am I doing? That's been the time of a talk for a minute, especially with this Jupiter, all, all this stuff. So, but it just it helps you, I feel, talking about the future, give you a stronger sense of where you may want to explore your future, where you're wanting to try to take things. So if that's something that's resonated with you, definitely check that out. And I also have information in my on my Instagram page as well. And I think that's all I got for you. And if you want to check out any of the readers that I really enjoy watching, their kids or any, any sort of apps or tools that I enjoy working with, check that all down in the description box as well. But Cancer, let's get into your general energy of the day because I like this. While we're talking about Mars entering into Aries, this is not very Mars and Aries. But you got the Foggy Bog card here, which is a card of patience. And this is the 18th card, which is the Moon card energy, Pisces. And that's so fascinating considering Mars would have just gotten out of Pisces. And I feel that with Mars just entering Pisces and considering how that short, that void of course energy is, I feel there's going to be a need maybe or that, that yearning to, I feel with that maybe like how I was talking about that excitable energy with the sextile. It's how to take that excitable energy and make it sustainable for the long haul. You know, how do we take that and utilize that as a, maybe I feel like this could be a great time to take stuff from the mind and start grounding it, you know, so that it doesn't maintain, so that it doesn't just stay a feeling, so that you can turn them into actions. I feel this is one where this Mars entering Aries feels very mindful. And I feel it's going to be one where we want to lock, like write down what we're feeling, where we're wanting to go, and then let it marinate for a moment. Because now both with Mars and Venus domicile, you know, with them both in their home signs, it's like Mars is bringing the energy and Venus is bringing the sustainability. She's bringing the, the cultivation. They're both, because Venus in, in Taurus is hardworking. She's building stuff to last. And so this can be one where if we're patient with this, you know, and really kind of getting a viewpoint of like, you know, when I'm saying like we're grounding this stuff, you know, it's just like getting a game plan, whether it's like, okay, I want to be able to run a marathon. I need to do this day, this day, this day, you know, however that's looking, maybe this is doing it in a year, maybe this is doing it in a few years. But I feel this is a time where 
if anything has been feeling maybe a little foggy, this Aquarius energy could be talking about this with someone, you know, maybe kind of breaking the illusions, being open, seeing where we may have been fixated on a certain thought. Because again, Aquarius is that fixed air energy where we may have been rigid in our thinking and need to kind of expand out of something and be patient with yourself and allowing the knowledge to integrate. But I feel it's, but I do feel that there is going in, if we are looking for help with others, there's a, a going in with that intention of be patient and let it integrate. Really listen to what they say before we kind of discard it. You know, I remember, I'm not sure where this this came up or why this is, I, I, I remember the feeling, but it, it's always stuck with me that when you're listening to someone talk to repeat what they're saying as they're saying it. Because sometimes, and I notice for me, that my mind will start something. I'll hear a thought and something, like sometimes something someone will say will get me where I'll have several other thoughts while I'm listening to them, but I'm not fully in it. You know, I'm like, my head is, is has gone. I've kind of like, okay, I kind of get the gist of what they're saying. This is an interesting thought. I wonder about blah, 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 blah. But more so, I feel like going with that intention type of listening and going with this patience to kind of clear something up if that if that resonates but let's go ahead and get some tarot on this with this foggy bog because maybe I feel for some here that if you're not sure where things are going maybe things are feeling a bit elusive right now I mean again patience I, I believe me I patience has not been even though I, t I talk about the that guy who told me that patience is a virtue I've, I feel like I've been going against that and that's been, the theme has been very impatient so believe me I, I, I completely understand that but ew, that's interesting <laughs> but and that is interesting hold on cancer look at yourself let's see what's going on here Interesting. Well, those earth energy. I'm with it. So you have the ten of swords, the four of disc, the devil, Capricorn, and then the hierophant, Taurus. And speaking of so, here's Taurus, and we're just talking about them. Patience. The hierophant moves in this deck. He moves, takes a step every ten thousand years. He's very. He's almost a guy. He could teach. He could teach Pluto a thing or two. <laughs> but you know, we. You know, in this human body, we don't have ten thousand years. But that doesn't mean that you're not going to get to where you want to get to, Cancer. I feel the four of discs is there's power in patience there's power in strategy and getting things grounded there's with the devil capricorn energy you know they capricorn is viewed as this hard working sign this 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 weight they they have like the weight of the world on their shoulders but Capricorn is more than just that that building energy cuz the, the the reason that that I feel that things fall so heavy on Aquarius and Capricorn with Saturn being their, one of their modern guardians or Saturn being their guardian is that Saturn Saturn just wants to know what you want to be. That's Capricorn energy. Who do you want to be? And I love the four of this. This is the sun in Capricorn. And you have a lot of sun. There's a lot of sun energy too because the Ten of Swords is a sun in Gemini. But and even that sun energy is talking about this sense of who am I? And I feel that the reason that they, they have said so much weight, because that's a heavy question when we think about that. Who am I? And what that also means when I take that out to who does society think I am? You know, and, 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 you know, and not that it matters what society thinks, but we inherently, deep down, we do tend to care, we'll care what society thinks. You know, we want to fit in or feel that level of acceptance or that the level that you've done something to, that you've brought value, I feel, with this, 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 the four of this being here. This is what your, this is that I feel like what's your, your worth, you know, what, and not what I feel society feels your worth is what you know you are, what, what you're worth, but it's a being patient with understanding that power. And I feel sometimes that 
that thought process, the idea of patience. And we have, I feel the ways that we can maybe self-destruct sometimes or put ourselves in a hole with where our thoughts can be sometimes. I'm just thinking with that moon energy that's coming through here again with, on that eight, with that number 18, how we can kind of cook up these things like, oh, because we have to be patient, we have to, I'll never get what I want, I'll never do this. And that's the test of Saturn. You know, this is the thing like, okay, for example, like, doing astrology it's like this is something that even if i've like never got any kind of recognition or any kind of payment or anything along those lines would i still be doing it and the answer is yes because it's it has brought it's it's been nice to feel to, to have gone from from for for myself to have gone from to just being just that like sure the guy who could just kind of turn it on and just be fun and things but to actually like oh well hey you know your 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 son's here you got this going on and your blah 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 like have you thought about this you know to, to like to be to be able to have something that has some substance you know to bring some some real value and to feel that that appreciation as well you know, that's been the whole thing. And that's the whole point of Capricorn. It's just doing it because the thing fulfills you. And that's the test, you know, that, that Saturn brings, you know. But the reward is is that true sense of power and not the definition that I feel society gives this power. It's not all the thing. When you think about Taurus, you know, we're in with, well, now you know, I was talking about where the sun's at. The sun being in Taurus, Venus being in Taurus now, depending on when you're watching this. Jupiter, Uranus still being in Taurus. This is... You know, your sense of... I feel like your sense of value, you know, like... Hmm... And it's very interesting too, because when I, I think I'm gonna move on from this. And, and one thing I feel to be mindful. One last couple of thoughts with this. I feel that this, that sometimes with the patience, this ten of swords, this devil energy. is giving me what happens when, you know, when you start to lose that sense of faith, because even the Hierophant can be that idea of, he's been, he's been associated with like the Pope and things like that. And I just feel like that sometimes we can lose that faith in the, in the patient, you know, when is this thing going to come? You know, you put in this work, where's this, how do we keep this foundation? And the devil can be where we're getting in these escapist tendencies because you want to, and it is, it, it gives, it's a challenging energy that's happening here. You know, there's, it's this, you know, the, Patience, I feel, can lead you to some tough places. Patience can show you what you're made of, but it's there's something about here of coming on the other side of this thing. It may be to a place where the patience, the energies are not trying to ruin you. You know, Ten of Swords, it's, it's got this ruin on this card here. But the whole point of this journey is not to lead you to ruin, it's to lead you to to rise. You know, it's, let me get some, let me get some more on this, Cancer. Let's see who's going to have cancer. All right. So you have the three of wands, the four of wands, the six of disc, the ace of cups, and the magus card here. Now with this ace of cups, I feel that this is what, you know, when we're in that state of patience, when we're needing to... 
It feels like when we're waiting on the path, we're on a path maybe even to open up with the three of wands. It's what are we manifesting? What are we creating in between? How are we utilizing that time in order to, like I was saying with that 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 void of course energy, that the moon sex tiling Mars, how do we keep that excitement alive? How do we keep, what do we need to give to ourselves? It's this six of disc to I don't know, to keep the manifest, to keep the magic kind of to kind of flowing here. Maybe you're on a I feel like an example maybe would be let's say if you wanted to set out, I wanted to run, let's say, three miles by a certain amount of time and you know I've, I've reached that we're at that point where i've set that mark and i can run maybe a mile and a half and i feel that sometimes in that frustration we can forget the fact that we can now run a mile and a half which we weren't doing before over the fact that we have, haven't reached three miles yet and i feel that it's it's like how can we more so appreciate hmm It's like when the, when you're in this place of where you're feeling like you're delayed or maybe that you're blocked or something along those lines. What are some little things to help you just keep that keep that going? You know, I've been going through a bit of a tough energy here from since the since the moon, maybe like the day after the full moon till about till about here recently <laughs> until, till about when the moon got in Capricorn. And it was a bit rough, but you know, I, there were these, I was like, okay, but right around kind of Capricorn, I was like, all right, let's, 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 let's see. Okay. Because it's like, I was in a weird manifesting place in Sag and I was like, all right, what are some solid things that are happening right now? Let's look at, let's look at what's, let's be practical. You have these, I, I got some, so I got some shoes. Come, I'm a big, big person, like a big health nut. And when it comes to anything to help make living in this body more comfortable, more efficient, I'm with. I got these new shoes. They're like these grounding shoes. And I've been looking in the ground. I got this grounding mat that I've had forever. But now I've got something else to kind of help with like the walking and things. It's fantastic. I'm really excited. But it's like that was a little win for me. You know, that I, where I had took a situation that I didn't want to be stuck in. But I was like, well, this situation help me to get this so that's dope so and it's like like the little things you know like see and it's like because it, believe me my patience has been tested <laughs> but I feel that that's what this journey does and sometimes I feel those roadblocks can be moments of, like little times of moments in this like how do I want to put this they can be blessings in disguise this could be where you know, you've you've been hitting a roadblock and it's like, you know what, maybe instead of going at running it this way, maybe I need to instead of like going on like uh, maybe I, you've been running on like the treadmill. Maybe I need to start running outside more or maybe mix maybe or maybe mix up the two. Maybe I don't like running outside all the time. There's too much. This There's too much that switch it up. Maybe try a different form of car to kind of like evolve this a little bit, you know, kind of play around with the stuff, different ways of. I feel of caring for the energies, caring for the uh, find ways to keep the dream alive, a way to keep you just kind of motivated through the patience. Because I feel collectively we're in kind of a patient time because things are, you know, we get so used to the, the instant, you know, we're so used for that. Things happen so fast, but when you're thinking about growing stuff, for example, I'm just thinking with Venus being in Taurus, it's a hard working energy because the Empress is in the garden. In gardens, just I don't just plant a seeds and then there's this lush, full thing by the end of the day. Wouldn't that be something? Now I got to tend to it. I got to water it, making sure it's getting enough sun. How's the, do we, do we do I put the compost here? What am I watering this thing with? Can I get this, like, you know, like what tips and tricks do people have? It's a lot of work. And... I feel the energies are just, again, they slow us down because then too, in that slowdown, in that being patient, you know, we could have been going on one path when two other paths may open up and they may even be maybe even better than you had imagined. It may even unlock some different types of tools that you hadn't thought you would have there, Cancer. So 
Well, that's something I feel like kind of just kind of contemplate on there too. Yeah, those roadblocks can be blessings in. I feel like blessings in disguise for sure. But let's get some. Let's get some advice from Uranus and Saturn. Interesting, Cancer. Oh, I think you had yourself. Oh, Cancer. So Saturn's here. <laughs> you got, and that's very fascinating. Because so is Aquarius. You got this universe or the world card here, Saturn, the star card, Aquarius. And then you got the three, or excuse me, ten of wands. Let's switch back over. Now... You know, Cancer, I feel with this, you know, the world card is this ending, you know, and I feel like it's, there's this wish that maybe the seed that you started, this could have been where you start, this thing that you started up for the, during the, this new moon with the eclipse, because this was a lot of big energy that I feel like we've been kind of working through, that we've been integrating at collectively. I feel there has been a lot of, changes a lot of challenges but the, the star card is a card of hope you know in that you're going to get to that next chapter but i feel the world the universe being here is that there's something that's in order to get in i feel like to appreciate what is coming there are some burdens or some some things that are needing to be released with the ten of wands something that is that i feel because this is the ten, the ten of Wands is Saturn and Sagittarius, and I was actually looking at a chart today from someone in the past who happened to have from like the night early, like early, like the just nineteen hundred you just started, and they that was the time of Sat when Saturn or was it Saturn? Oh no, that was I think time Uranus may have been in Sagittarius, but I I found that fascinating all the same, but it was maybe Saturn was in Sagittarius regardless it's I feel like that energy is like a restricting of beliefs and needing to be disciplined in broadening your view because Saturn is not just rigid Saturn is very old when you like, you know I know Saturn gets painted as this kind of dark intense strict figure but when you think about the fact that he's the the traditional guardian of Aquarius Saturn's very friendly. Saturn is open. If you're open to what he's, you know, if you're here picking up what he's putting down, and you're, you don't have to. Saturn doesn't care. <laughs> but he's got wisdom that he's dropping, you know, and that's where I feel even in this patience, this, this journey is a, is, and then I know how hackneyed this may sound, but it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. There are times where we are picking up the pace where we can, where we're running. Yeah, we're going towards the dream. We're going towards the wish, towards the future. But there are other times where before we cross the finish line, there are some things that we need to tend to, some things that, and, and, and you know, Cancer, this Ten of Wands is, you know, it's always a heavy card. It's, it's feeling like the, you know, there's this, this pressure, there's this weight of the world. Like why, you know, it's just, you know, wanting to go. But I feel like things are going to start moving here soon, you know, with this energy. Like the, the world is here. We're, we're closing out a chapter. And now, and this may be something too with this Ten of Ten of, or excuse me, with the star card being here's a card of unexpected help. You know, keeping an open mind. I feel to to different perspectives. I feel kind of coming with this, and who knows where that may may take you. And even too, the star card can be a card of healing. This is a card like is a card right after. Yes, there's a card right after the tower. So you may be coming through something, going like maybe healing through a process. There's a deep energy of being patient with that. You know, this is, and I feel the Hierophant is, again, he could be a card for me of initiation of this test. And I feel like it's not necessarily life just testing you to test you, but it's just like, hey, it's like with any, like, I feel like kind of test, any regular test or something, you know, like, okay, these are the areas that they're weak in, you know, and not to just keep you weak. It's like, okay, if my... I knew growing up that like, oh, 
I like I, I excel in music and in, and in languages and in language arts and reading, but my math and my science, I could, I oh, <laughs> almost forgot myself, <laughs> I could care less. <laughs> but I know that it was something that I needed to work on. And so it's kind of something like that, but... And, and letting it be a motivator as opposed to a... I thought I had something really clever. There was something really clever at the end of that. It was going to be rhyming. It was going to be great. But you get what I'm saying, Cancer. At least I hope so. But I think I'm going to leave that there, Cancer. But if you like that, if anything resonated with you, give it a thumbs up. And share this, Cancer. If you know someone who's been... Because Cancer, we all struggle with patience. You know, no one likes to be patient. <laughs> no one... like. Because it's just like, it, it, again, it's that exciting energy. And I feel like it's, even with that void of course, you know, sometimes we can just kind of breeze through these these energies. And I feel like it's, patience does have, there's power in patience. There, there, there really is. And I feel that Saturn teaches that discipline, that, that the good things come, or not the good things, but great things come to those who wait and put in. And it's not like you're just waiting just to wait. You know, it's like, what are we doing in that downtime? Okay, I can't force this any further. What do I need to do next? You know, when I think about myself and where, what, what challenges I work through, you know, technology is a big one for me. I like the internet. It's just like, I, I don't, I don't understand it. Like, I, I don't want to say I don't understand it, but it's, there's, there's something in me that is, and this may have been something because my, my stepfather, he's a lot of Leo in his chart too. And he could, he, he sells a flip phone, could, could care about the internet <laughs> about, or about of technology in general. But, and I feel like maybe that's something I've made, I've picked up when, you know, Gemini moon is something I picked up in my early environment and, I'm working on it, you know, but it's, you know, just, I have to be, it's something I know I have to be patient with, but I do know that it's something that I have to put, will put in work, so, but, you know, if you don't know someone who's struggling with that, you know, share this cancer, and then subscribe there, you hierophant, hit that bell button, you know, find all these videos each day, and then last little bit there, cancer, you know, if you want to know how these energies are working more kind of collectively, kind of get an idea of what the celestial weather is is going on there, how this may be working in your chart. Maybe that's what I'll call it celestial weather. It's raining planets. Like so, something, that might be it. <laughs> I'm still playing around with the title of, of this video, like, of what I'm going to call that. So stay tuned. But come over to my other channel, Alchemist Data. And, I'm, and also Cancer. And I'm going to start promoting this more. So if you happen to stick around to this, and if you, I want, I want to start doing some chart, like live chart readings, or at least start posting some chart readings on there until I get a live schedule going, and then I'm going to start doing like live, like maybe weekly chart analysis on the other channel, because I don't want to inundate this channel too much. But, so if you, if that's something you're interested in, I could go over, I may do like where I go over like a solo return chart for the year, or... And just like for like an example chart, if you like, or I could do like a lunar return or something like that, or just even like a natal birth chart analysis. So if that's something that you're curious, you want to be just, because I'll just pick the charts at random. So if that's something that you would be curious in, drop your, your, you, you can feel, feel free to, if you don't want to just have your, your date or your date of birth, place of birth, time of birth on there. You can also just DM me directly on my Instagram page as well, and I will pull up the chart, and I'll do that stuff in the future. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely do that. But also check out my other channel, because I do weekly videos talking about the transits that are happening on, you know, the celestial chit-chat. Oh, that might be it, celestial chit-chat. I think that might be a cancer. There it is. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me write that down, celestial chit-chat. But yeah, I cover all the aspects on there. Cancer is a great old time. And all that house give you the description box below. But let me get your surprise cards here so I can get you out of here, cancer. Oh, I like that. And talk about all these, you know, all these energies with signs being in their home planets. You got, you got the Four of Cups here, which is the moon in Cancer. But this, the Four of Cups is interesting because, you know, in the, I'm thinking in the Rider White deck, the Four of Cups, there's this figure that's sitting under a tree and there's these three empty cups. And there's this fourth cup that the universe is handing out, but the person is focused on the fact that the other three cups are empty, that they're, that they're missing 
the other cup, you know, or that they're, and that's more so kind of getting into the five of cups energy too. But this one is giving me, it's giving me that we're focusing on There's something here, I feel like, about the perspective. Something about, it's like we're, how, even like how this picture in this card is. It's like even though you have these cups that are shining, there's this storm that's kind of brewing in the background here. And it's almost like this, almost like this, this sullying of, of, of the abundance that's around. And I don't feel like it's intentional, Cancer. But I feel like it's... Patience can be a luxury because it gives you a chance to slow down. It gives you a chance to not like force things to, it can give you a chance to regroup and really kind of figure where you want to focus on. It can bring up frustrations, but it gives you a chance to like, okay, what actions can I take with these frustrations? How do I want to, and be patient with the fact that, oh, maybe there's more that like, oh, that might be why things aren't moving like I want to because I may have this that I need to deal with or that's just one thing, you know, that may kind of come up there, Cancer. But you know, let me see what's going on with your your oracle cards here. Okay, Cancer. Ooh, I take that, Cancer. Hold on. You got yourself. Ooh, and this Emperor energy. So you got the fourth card here, which is the Badger Spirit, Cancer. And this is a card of be fearless and bold, and that's the emperor energy all day. And you know, and that's interesting too when we're considering to that Mars, into, the emperor has entered into Aries. Well, I guess the I guess it would technically be the towers entered into Aries, whatever. But It's very interesting what this badger spirit is giving. I almost, it feels like that sometimes I feel, and, and you, you know, take this as it resonates. You know, have you ever done something where you've wanted to to maybe start a thing, but you think about all the work that's going to be put in into it. So maybe you kind of like, oh, I don't have time for this or, oh, that won't ever fit into my schedule because of blah, 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 or this and that. But, you know, we'll ask the universe what we need and then won't make the time for, you know what I mean? But I feel this be fear, fearless and bold is to to not be afraid of the extra work, you know, that it comes to that. You know, and it's not like we're overburdening ourselves with the, with the Ten of Wands here. I feel that's not what Saturn asks when he's, when he's putting the list of things to do. He's wanting you to go after what you want fearlessly and bold, but be patient with the process because there is, it's a, it's, it is an uphill uphill climb when we're going on this journey there are going to be times where the conditions are great you know the skies are clear and there are other times where there may be storms cloud we may need to hike pitch up a tent and kind of wait out the storm a little bit when we're going through some things you know hopefully that analogy makes sense but that's what i feel this this badger spirit is being able to face, I feel, patience with bravery. Because it, you know, it, it's easy to, I feel like, wanting to kind of force things along, to to try to force things to happen. But I feel it can, it takes it takes real bravery, I feel like, to sit in, in that, that energy of knowing, like, when we're getting in, like, divine timing and that things will work out when they're meant to work out. And that you've done all, and knowing that you've done all that you can and not needing to force a situation. You know, being bold in stillness, in that patience. It's, it, feel, it may feel a bit counter counterintuitive, but I feel like that's the wisdom that Mars, this, this last, I feel like this previous trek of Mars through Pisces was a very enlightening one for Mars. And I feel it can be a potentially enlightening one for us to work with our energies, how we work with our energies more intentionally. And I like how it's like we're talking about this going into the last quarter moon, which we'll be talking about tomorrow, and maybe even collectively letting go of how we've been going through things and how we've just expected stuff. And huh, we'll get into that more more tomorrow, Cancer. We'll we'll definitely talk about that. But I think I'm gonna leave that there. So 
Stay mindful, Cancer. Stay aware. Keep your wits about you. Keep eyes on the moon. Keep, you know, monitor your, be aware of the, your fluctuations of emotions, Cancer, and, you know, where you're at in these energies, how you're tending to yourself in these fluctuations there, what lessons and, 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 and tools and things that come up for you in there. And I will catch you, Cancer, on the next one tomorrow.